I think the, the key to your question is the duration of how long China stays flat and how long business is absolutely closed in China. If the schools are closed in China, if the factories are closed in China, if we saw, as Phil LeBeau reported, that January car sales were down 92 percent in China, if we can't get parts for production here, there is a chain effect uh, and a bit of a contagion that will slow other economies. If this goes on through a couple of quarters, yes, it can uh, certainly lead Europe and other places into recession, and it threatens a recession here. Joe, what do you say? Well, I think also we're, we're, we were going into this year fairly uh, pessimistic on growth, or at least w well, relative to what most were seeing. I think the world uh, can avoid uh, a recession, and, and the U.S. is an important reason why. Uh, but again, our baseline is not a recession, but I think, again, to the gentleman's point, the duration of how long this persists, not just in China, but how it spreads around the world, that's going to be a key point of whether or not it goes into the second quarter. I think we sort of just covered it, but let's listen anyway to uh, what Larry Kudlow said a few yeah. moments ago. If you're an investor out there and you have a long-term point of view, I would suggest very seriously taking a look at a market, a stock market, that is a lot cheaper than it was a week or two ago. Time-honored wisdom there, I suppose, Michael Farr. Uh, I suppose, Tyler, you know, my great friend Larry Kudlow is a very wise man. Uh, but the old, there's another old expression on Wall Street, which is don't try to catch a falling knife. Wait till it hits the ground. Uh, I think that that probably is more important wisdom when we don't know how all of this is going to unfold. So uh, what I would tell a client and an investor is, uh, set a couple of levels in your mind. Have a discipline here. Don't react emotionally. Don't react out of fear and don't just jump in at the last minute. So say stocks go down 10 percent, I'm going to do some buying. Stocks go down 20 percent, I'm going to do some buying. You have to tell yourself ahead of time because when stocks are down 20 percent, it feels awful. You're not thinking things look cheap and it looks like an opportunity. You're thinking about how you can get to cash and get to the door. That's when you need to buy. So Larry's right, but I'll argue with his timing a bit. You know, Joe, let me let me ask a question. You know, we've seen that manufacturing has slowed in the U.S. over the past couple of years, yeah. but the services sector of the economy has held up very well. But it is precisely the yeah. services sector that would seem to me to be potentially in a virus outbreak the most vulnerable. Yes, in fact, uh, I mean, I would certainly agree, Tyler. I mean, anything that really requires or uh, involves human to human contact. Uh, so leisure, hospitality, clearly the airline industry, uh, typically a source of strength and stability for the U.S. economy, other developed markets. That's what is probably one of the more disturbing aspects mm -hmm. uh, of this potential breakout uh, because, uh, you know, manufacturing, much more cyclical, but also much uh, smaller share of the economy. Joe, I just want to ask about uh, something else that Mr. Kudlow said when he talked about the prospect of a V-shaped recovery in China and a second-half export-driven uh, rebound here in the U.S. And I ask you this, just so you know, as the Dow is now down 815 points today. Yep. And again, you know, it's unfortunate so, to see these events. I would underscore, you know, let's not, let's not panic. I mean, we were going into the year... Uh, uh, we didn't know when this would occur, but the markets were a little frothy in one way. So we take a step back. Let's look at the facts. I mean, I think it's very likely that China is going to contract in the first quarter. The persistence of the spread outside of, the, of China, we do not know. Um, I think the good news is that the global economy, the U.S. in particular, and China's uh, level of growth, it wasn't like that was materially weak going into this downturn. So that, that's one solace. Um, and, and, you know, noting that, uh, that the, the Federal Reserve and other central banks may have to wade in here uh, if these trends continue. Joe, I'm, and I'm, I'm on exactly that point, a moment ago we were down 846. Yeah. That's a, sort of the most recent session, though I keep uh, scribbling on my paper here as we have to update this. Uh, Mr. Kudlow was asked about uh, a response from the Federal Reserve, and he said publicly or privately he was not hearing of anything like you know, a half point rate cut, especially an emergency one. But do you think the markets are throwing a bit of a tantrum at that uh, at that answer? Well, I've been a little I surprised a talk... in terms of how. Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Joe, and then Michael. I was been, I, I've been I've been a little surprised at how much uh, the bond market has rallied. I know that that said, we had one or two easings in our outlook this year. I think that's increasingly likely. Um, I think, though, they will wait to see how it starts to imprint the economic data. There's always that risk that one overreacts. 
at the same time that you see potentially some stability in the virus front. Again, we may not know. So I, I think the Federal Reserve will be prudent, not necessarily commenting on this. It was only last week when they said they were on hold for the indefinite future. So I, think, I think it would be almost concerning. Uh, and the market would potentially say, do they know something that we don't?